We're filming. Everybody say hi. Second period. That's it. All right. <laughs> All right, very good. So we are uh, going to finish up section 15 with the story of Jacob and Esau that we did yesterday. Uh, I'm not putting the iPad on, so I'm just going to put it here. Um, very good. So, so the highlights, just for the people in the second period, are in Schoology, if you want to follow along, since you're not going to see it on the TV, because it doesn't work. All right? Uh, so yesterday, we were introduced to Isaac's family, right? Isaac's wife's name is... What? Who remembers Isaac's wife's name? Rebecca. Rebecca, very good, right? And I, Rebecca is going to have two sons, right? Who are the, the two sons, Chase? Esau and Jacob. Esau and Jacob. Who is the older of the, the two, Damien? Esau. Esau, very good, right? By that, how much? How much older was he, uh, Luke? Like an arm's length, right? Because it says that Esau is born and Jacob is holding on to his heel, right? Because from the time the boys were in utero, right, they were like fighting. They were jostling over who was going to be first born. Esau wins it, all right? Um, and we said that mom and dad are going to pick favorites, right? Not that this happens in any of your families, right? But Isaac and Rebecca are going to choose favorites. Who's whose favorite? Who's who's who, Gianna? Um, Esau is Isaac's favorite. Okay. Very good, right? Esau is going to be Isaac's favorite, dad's favorite, right? And Jacob is going to be mom's favorite, right? Because Esau goes out, he hunts, he kills food, right? And he provides food for dad, whereas Jacob is the mama's boy. He hangs out and, and you know, knits with mom in the tents, right? Um, so, yeah, so that's good. Nothing wrong with either of those things. So it is what it is, right? Then we look at verse 29, all right? Now, my, my second period didn't really do this that much, so... Um, <coughs> Let's, let's go and read. Who wants to read? Somebody right over here. Kaylee, do you mind reading? Nice and loud. Once, when Jacob was cooking his stew, Esau came in from the open stairs. He said to Jacob, let me gulp down some of that red stuff. I'm starving. That is why he was called Edom. But Jacob replied, first give me your birthright in exchange for it. Look, said Esau, I'm on the point of dying. What good will any birthright do me? But Jacob insisted, swear to me first. So he sold Jacob his birthright under oath. Jacob then gave him some bread and the lentil stew, and Esau ate, drank, got up, and went his way. Esau cared little for his birthday. All right, very good, right? So I, this story is fantastic, right? I mean, because this is what we do in our families, right, with, with our brothers and sisters. We charge exorbitant prices for the most menial tasks, right? And so understand the situation. Jacob's cooking in the kitchen, right? And Esau barges in. He's like, yo, let me go down some of that red stuff, right? Uh, and what is the price for the red stuff? that Jacob is going to charge him, Sienna? His birthright. His birthright. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll give you some soup, but when, my, when mom and dad die, I want your share of the inheritance. Right, like, that's absurd. Like, that's absurd. Who, who would do this, right? Like, I mean, but that's what he says, right? And what's even, I think, even more absurd than the ask is that Esau says okay. Right, notice he says, what good, right, I, I'm on the point of dying, what good will any birthright do me? Kind of like, I'm so hungry, I'm going to die right now if I don't get this bowl of soup. Like, come on, Esau. Right, and so Esau will sell, right, and that's where if you just highlight, let me gulp down some of the red stuff, uh, the note says Esau will sell his birthright for a bowl of soup. I mean, you guys got that yesterday, right? Right, um, and so this is the last note that we had to get as a class here in the commentary, just highlight what consists of the birthright. So just highlight that, right? Um, the birthright had two, three things that came along with it, right? And the birthright was given to the firstborn son, right? So the firstborn son got double the inheritance when mom and dad died, right? They got double the inheritance. It's a special inheritance, double, okay? Double, double, right? So that's nice, right? So you get half of everything, right? And then your siblings got to split the rest, okay? Uh, you also were in charge of the family when dad dies. You became the patriarch. You became, right, the guy who is going to lead the rest of the family when dad gets died. So you have to tell your siblings what to do, right? If we were looking at a monarchy, right, the birthright would mean that you got to be the next king so to speak. Right, does that make sense? All right, and then finally, the third one is that you get this special blessing from God, uh, from your dad, right? And that's really the one that people wanted, right? It was this special blessing that came from dad, 
All right. Um, well, because that was like the the the, the blessing to, to have an abundant life after afterwards to continue to live in life of blessing and grace. Okay. When Esau sells his birthrights, what he's really selling is that inheritance part. The other two are not his to give away. That's that's Jacob's. I'm sorry. That's Isaac's to choose who's going to get that. All right. So what we see happening here uh, is Esau sells his birthright, uh, and so I, I, Jacob will have that double inheritance, but he's got to somehow find a way to get the blessing and to get the head of the family, right? And you can only get that from Isaac, right? And we're going to see how he does that in the next section, right? Now, the name Jacob, and you should highlight this here in the commentary, means what? What does the name Jacob mean? He deceives, right? Um, and so we'll see that kind of carry out here. Jacob is known as a deceiver. He, he's going to dupe people his entire life. Right? He's a great duper, a right? great deceiver, right? Which is why they named him that when he was holding on to the heel of Esau because he was trying to seem as though he was the firstborn. Okay? All right, fantastic. Any questions, comments, concerns about that? No. We're all good? All right, thank you. Well, she's good. good. All right, section 16, folks. Section 16, who wants to, who wants to read here uh, very, from the very beginning? Um, go ahead, Luke, nice and loud. Nice and loud. This way they can hear you in the video. I'll move it closer to you. Go ahead. When Isaac was so old that his eyesight had failed him, he called his older son Esau and said to him, Son, yes, father, he replied. Isaac then said, As you can see, I am so old that I may die now at any time. Take your gear, therefore, your quiver and bow, and go out into the country to hunt some game for me. With your catch, prepare an appetizing, appetizing dish for me, such as I like, and bring it for me to eat, so that I may give you my special blessing before I die. All right, very good. Right, so Isaac's getting old, right? Uh, and he wants to give his blessing, right? But something has happened to Isaac. What's happening to him here? He's gone, He's gone blind, right? It says you sold that his eyesight had failed, and so Isaac has gone blind. So highlight that first. Verse, right, Isaac was told that his eyesight had, had failed him, and just write down the note that he is blind. That's going to play a huge, huge part in what's about to happen here in the story. All right? And so Isaac's getting old. It's time for him to give and part his fatherly blessing on one of his two sons. Which one of the two sons does he want to give the blessing to? Which one of the two? Esau. Esau, there you mind, right? Esau. Okay, and so he says to him, go out, hunt something, right, cook it for me in a delicious way, we'll eat together, and then I'll give you my blessing. Right? Fantastic. All sounds good, right? So Esau goes out. The problem here is that who's listening to this plan? Who's listening to this plan, Isabella? Rebecca. Rebecca. And her favorite is who? Who's Rebecca's favorite, Damien? So she wants who to get the blessing and not Esau. Jacob. Oh my goodness. This is ridiculous. Alright, so let's go ahead and read verse 5. What's going what's gonna to happen here? Um, let's get some... Uh, sorry. Ben, do you mind reading? Nice and loud? Which verse? Verse 5. Nice and loud. Rebekah had been listening while Isaac was speaking to his son Esau. So when Esau went out into the country to hunt some game for his father, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Listen, I overheard your father tell your brother Esau, Bring me some game, and with it prepare an appetizing dish for me to eat, so that I may give you my blessing with the Lord's approval before I die. Now, son, listen carefully to what I tell you. Go to the flock and get me two first fruits. With these, I will prepare an appetizing dish for your father, such as he likes. Then bring it to your father to eat, that he may bless you before he dies. But my brother Esau is a hairy man, said Jacob to his mother Rebecca. Now I'm speaking. Suppose my father hears me? He would think that I'm making sport of him, and I shall go on. Myself as heir to the quarter of blessing. His mother, however, replied, Let any curse against his son fall on me. You do it as I say, go and get me the kids. Oh boy. Right, so Rebecca's listening to this whole plan unfold as she devises her own plan and tells Jacob to do what? What does she tell him to do? Hmm. What, you don't know? No, I don't know. <laughs> to go out, right, and get me two kids and kill them. And we'll cook them in an appetizing way that your dad likes. Right now, of course, folks, kids are what? Baby goats. Right? We're not talking about children here. 
right? Yeah, oh, she's like, this is weird. <laughs> Kids is a name for a baby goat, right? So he's going to go out to the flock, right? He's going to bring mom two baby goats. She's going to cook it in a way dad likes. Jacob's going to bring it into dad, pretending to be Esau. And Isaac, because he can't see, will bless Jacob and say Esau. Right? This is messed up. A mom is Louis, like, devising a plan against one of her sons. Like, come on, people, right? Uh, notice, notice Jacob's response to this, right? What, how does Jacob feel about mom's plan? How does he feel about it? Because he's feeling like Persian. Y- y- why? Because it's wrong to do? Because it's wrong to deceive dad? Yeah. Is that what he says? No. No, why? Because it's not going to work. It's not Right? That's the idea. Right? Jacob doesn't say, Mom, this would be wrong for us to do. It would be wrong for us to deceive Dad, to take advantage of him in his old age, right? and to do this. No, that's not what he says. He says, Ma, I don't think your plan's going to work. Why? Because Esau is what? Esau is what? This is like the funniest excuse. Harry. Harry! He's a hairy guy, and I'm, small skin, I'm smooth-skinned. Right? If Dad were to like touch my arm and feel my hand, he's gonna know right about, right away that this ain't Esau because I'm smooth, he's hairy. Right? So he doesn't have a problem with the fact that this would be deceiving dad. He has a problem with the fact that he doesn't think mom's plan is gonna work. And she says to him, Relax, I'll figure it out. Just don't kill me the kids. Alright? So that's exactly what, what happens. Verse 14, Jacob goes out, he gets the baby goats. Right? Mom prepares an appetizing dish. How are they going to take care, in verse 16, of the hairiness problem? What are they going to do? Maybe we should, I mean, I don't have it highlighted here, but maybe we, maybe we should, should. Right, well, verse 15 and 16, what are they going to do? Read that to yourself. What are they going to do in order to take care of the hairiness, the hairiness problem here? In order to help trick Isaac. Anybody? What is he going to put on, Kaylee? He took the skin of the goats and put on Jacob. Very good. They're going to take the goat skin and he's going to put it on his hands and on his neck. Mm-hmm. Right? Did you ever pet a goat? Did you ever pet a goat? It feels like, for lack of better, it feels like a hairy leg. Right? Goats are like, you know, they feel like a hairy leg. I don't know how else to explain it, right? Uh, that, that's a goat, right? Um, so he puts the goat skin on his neck and on his hands. And what else is he going to wear when he goes into dad? What else is he going to go? Verse 15. What else is he going to wear? Esau's clothing. Esau's clothing. Right? Esau's clothing. He's going to dress up like Esau, put the goat skin on his hand and on his neck, and then he goes to dad. Right? All right. So what happens? What happens? I think we got like a minute here. Maybe we should wait for what happens tomorrow. Yeah, should we wait for what happens tomorrow? Mm-hmm. All right. So we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, when, when he goes into dad. All right, folks? Um, all right, fantastic. So I'll pause the video. Bye, right, right, second period. Have a wonderful day. See you guys tomorrow. Pray for us at Mass.